I said before, basically, uh, typically I'm going to take my fuel uh, volume test at uh, a quarter inch opening and roughly about 50% of the swing opening here on the air sensor plate. Um, right now you can see our control pressures hanging out right at about 40 PSI. Uh, so, you know, we like that control pressure. It's not too bad. Um, we're, not, uh, we're not hooked up with anything uh, for electrical signal or load signal on the warm-up or control pressure regulator, so we, uh, we expect to see a hot uh, pressure, something that's not going to be, uh, in, you, know, um, uh, you know, default kind of heat in a way that, uh, that coil. So right now, we're looking at that. Um, I'm just trying to run right now uh, uh, a good amount of cleaner mixed with fuel through these injectors and through, through the fuel distributor to try to open up some of the clogs in those slits. The reason I suspect that there's clogs in the slits is uh, based on the position of my uh, uh, airflow plate, um, I will actually see certain injectors stop flowing and start flowing, um, and always at that certain mechanical position. So uh, there's portions of the slits that are clogged up on this one. But here it gives you an idea of uh, you know, injector pattern, and you'll want to pull away these graduated cylinders uh, from time to time and take a look at the actual flow pattern coming out of the nozzle of each uh, injector. And you can see up here, basically what you know we're, we're doing is we're actually simulating the uh, small and large amount of air flows coming through that uh, air sensor plate as the engine vacuum drawing air into the engine would normally draw this thing down, which is, you know, of course, why this diameter of this uh, uh, plate here is so large. So you have enough force acting against it to actually push down because you've got, you know, roughly somewhere between 80 to 90 psi of fuel pressure in here that you're acting against via that lever arm and rod. So you want to make sure not only through the uh, multiplication of force through the lever uh, that you also have a good amount of uh, you know, more or less piston size surface area for the, uh, the, the, the vacuum to operate on to uh, cantilever that. So now we've ran it through a couple of depressions and basically we're looking for, after we've run quite a bit of cleaner through this, we're looking for about a 10% discrepancy. Um, you can see we're right under about 25 mils on this first one, uh, the one behind it uh, looks like about 23. Uh, each graduation is a half milliliter on these uh, grad cylinders. And on the back one, when we come to this side, we've got a little bit more flow on this side, so we're probably going to keep running through cleaner through here, but right now we're pretty happy with the results that we're getting from uh, just circulating cleaner through here and trying to open up those slits. Before, uh, we would see uh, different operating ranges of those slits. We would see uh, a couple of the injectors on this side, one of the injectors on this side, uh, uh, just basically not really produce anything at all. There'd be probably a good 30% discrepancy on fuel as far as one graduated cylinder being near empty and the rest of them uh, having pretty much filled up. We did have to adjust the uh, one injector uh, bank on the fuel distributor that was tampered with, uh, which of course was this one back here. Um, but so far everything's looking good. Now if you want to uh, know why some of the injectors look different in the background as opposed to here, these are just vacuum sleeves that hook up to a vacuum port and some of those didn't come off uh, right on the back one so we're going to replace those. So some of them have and some of them don't. doesn't make any difference as far as uh, testing the injectors.